Hey, this is Matt once again. What about you in the video? There's another paid request, this time for Guillermo. And I apologize if I'm clearing my throat throughout it. I'll do my best to mass that, but I can't promise anything. But Guillermo, see <coughs> so here you go, wanted me to do a commentary on the 2014 found footage film Exists. And for those interested who requested any type of videos, commentaries, whatever, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And I have a pause at the beginning of uh, the movie. It exists from 2014. 3, 2, 1, pressing play. <clears throat> Since 1967, there have been 3,000 bid for encounters in the U.S. alone. Experts agree the creatures are only violent if provoked. <clears throat> now, this is one directed by Eduardo Sanchez, who was one of the guys behind the original Blair Witch Project, which I'm a big fan of. Also, they dealt with a film called Altered, which I didn't mind. Here pretty much showing remnants of our characters. As you tell, going on a trip up to the cabin in the woods. You know, pretty typical setup there. Uh, one of the reasons why I did quite enjoy this film is, number one, I thought the ending was interesting. And went a little bit of a different path compared to most found footage movies. I thought the acting wasn't too bad. Uh, I thought some of the sequences were pretty well shot. You know, in the found footage format, including the bicycle chase, which will be shown later. Uh, I didn't mind the lead guy. It went at a quick pace. And overall, I do think it's one of the better Bigfoot movies, and especially the best Bigfoot found footage movie. Now there's been quite a few of them actually because there's films like Willow Creek directed by Bobcat Goldthwaite. Yes, the guy who's in the Police Academy 2, 3, and 4, he directed one and that is a very boring one. Like the last 20 some minutes of the movie is a couple at a tent. I know it's trying to be scary but I, I'm sorry it wasn't. And most of it was kind of just two people go around this tourist attraction. Uh, Bigfoot County is the worst. Now is he the worst? Bigfoot, well no. D.B. Cooper versus Bigfoot, whatever the hell it's called. That's the worst Bigfoot movie I've seen. But it's one of the worst. Bigfoot County is definitely the worst found footage Bigfoot movie I've seen. It's one of the worst Bigfoot movies out there. A whole lot of nothing's happened in that movie, and then at the end, a couple wannabe deliverance red nets kill some people, and then the camera's sitting there, and then Bidfoot comes by. The end. <coughs> Jesus. This poor guy, like, they burnt a bit of his fucking beard off. How the hell you don't notice this? I have no idea. So again, it's because our other terrors were not paying attention to the row. They're trying to play a prank. And the one person completely innocent is the one who's asleep. The one who... Nothing about it is his fault. He was asleep. He was taking a nap. He was riding passenger. They were playing a joke on him. And spoiler alert for those who haven't seen the film. He's the lone survivor. So even that story structure I do like. Is that the one guy who's innocent out of all this. The one guy who did nothing wrong. Is the guy who survives. Yet he was asleep. They were playing a prank on him. Trying to mess with his beard. And if you look closely. During that scene, there's like an image, like, 
if this is the camera, it'd be like right here in the background. And yeah, they hit. Now you find out later, right, and spoiler for those who haven't seen the film, that what they hit was the child of this Bigfoot creature. And that's why this thing is so pissed off, is that this creature is pissed at the death of the kid and don't go vigilante on their ass. You kill my kid, I'm going to kill all you. And then the one bit is our lead... I'm not going to shoot you, I'm going to put the gun down, you do what you want, and then the creature decides to let her go and walk away. And that's why I mean, I thought it was an interesting ending for this type of movie. <laughs> you burned my fucking beard. Here you go. This shit's showing it right here, right there. See someone walking by. Actually, it's over here. Sorry, now we're over here. Looks like it's walking. Now, at this point, I've seen a lot of found footage movies. The thing with found footage is I didn't know what they were until around 1999 when I didn't get to see Blair Witch in the theater. I saw it on VHS. And we as a family did not have internet at the time, so I didn't get this bombardment of, of uh, promotion and marketing like other people did. I just saw like a trailer... Or maybe a, a TV spot. And I think a review. Maybe. Was a Cisco and Ebert maybe. Like very little bit. I'm like wow that looks interesting. What's this about. And I watched it. It was so unique. I'd never seen a film like it before. And it just impressed the hell out of me. And. I was uh, obsessed with the Blair Witch Project. During that time. Anything Blair Witch Project related uh, I wanted. I got the t-shirt. There's a book that showcased the history. Like the backstory of the Blair Witch legend. And comic book. And just. I still got it somewhere over there. Hidden away. And. Uh, got me intrigued with the found footage stuff since then. Now with me, I prefer the found footage films that try to shake it up a bit and have a kind of a different type of ending, since ninety eight percent of them have the same ending. So, you know, there's even different variety of types. There's the point of view movie like Searching, where it's from the camera. It's not found footage, but it's from a computer. Various videos. You have the file footage mixed in with interviews, like the tunnel, which I really enjoyed. You have the strictly point of view, like Hardcore Henry. It's not found footage, but just a point of view of a person. And then you have just others like As Above, So Below, I really enjoy, which came out the same year as this one. Butterfly Kisses, I really enjoy. You have fake documentaries like Savage Land, I really enjoyed, and Population Zero. I did a list of my favorites, either point of view, or fake documentary, or found footage. Blair Witch Project is number one, Searching number two, The Tunnel number three, Hardcore Henry number four, As Above So Below number five, Exist number six, Butterfly Kisses number seven, Savage Land number eight, Digging Up the Marrow number nine, Behind the Mass of Rise of Lizzie Vernon number ten. Then after that, films they altered. No, uh, it's called uh, Afflicted. I enjoyed Afflicted, Horror in the High Desert, Incident in the Loch Ness, Lake Mungo. <coughs> <coughs> 
<laughs> just appeared. Ain't nothing, just appeared. And there's, you know, there's, there's some films I like that were a bit underrated. I mean, like, Fate Blood was decent. The Dirties. They're watching. Taking a Deborah Lodian. The Sacrament. Uh, other films I didn't mind. And then, you know, the list goes on and on. But I did a list on Letterboxd. Uh, I think, like, up to, like, 40 some. Ones I, I love to, I don't mind. After that, they're either, eh, didn't care for it, and then the ones I absolutely despise. Like, the worst ones to me are... <sighs> Confessions of a Time Traveler, The Man from 3036, which was complete stupidity. Hip Hop Locos, Unaware, Alien Origin, Bid for County, The Upper Footage, Monster, which is the Asylum Chlorophyll ripoff, Leaving DC, which someone got mad at me recently for not liking it. I'm like, what is there to like? Do you have a guy who's poorly acting in a role where he goes by himself to the woods and he hears music or a flute or something outside as all this build up and then... He gets drunk, goes outside, you hear a gunshot, the end. Leaving DC sucked. Blackwater Vampire with shitty, Zombie Diaries, Hashtag Captured, Creature Lake, RWD, 2016 Blair Witch. Uh, those are to be some of the worst ones. Area 407, known as Tate 407. That's the one where people land from a plane crash and there's fucking dinosaurs. Eyes in the Dark. Uh, Apollo 18 was disappointing. Boots on the Ground was lame. And some of them, like, you got Devil's Past directed by Rennie Harlan. And you got... What was it? There was one directed by Barry Levinson. Which was uh, The Bay. <clears throat> Because M. Night Shyamalan Medina did one with The Visit. And that was awful. So, I mean, there are ones I enjoy. But there's a lot of other ones that just... And the thing is, I get so intrigued by found footage stuff. Because... For me, when they work, they really, truly work. I get to be like part of the group. Within the story. Within the sequence of events. Because of the point of view of the camera. It's like I'm hanging out with them, like I'm within this group. <clears throat> Something about that when it's done right, did you get a visceral reaction? At least out of me. Sorry, our lead ear is definitely adept at camera work and what GoPros deal with. So they explain all the cameras here that is all going to be for YouTube. Which is true. I mean, we're much more into a culture where YouTube is utilized a lot more. YouTube or Twitch or other stuff. Wanting to be seen, wanting to be heard, want to share our experiences. Part of this big or social group. Nice flip there with a bicycle. After this showcase of the GoPro being on the move, which is utilized even more later on with some of the bits of action sequences. Now here he's going to be spying on a little bit, which he should, and that's where he did, sees the first glimpse of what is out there. 
And of course, if that don't believe him at first, because who would believe anyone at first about these circumstances, even though he's got it on film? <laughs> so you could just show him the evidence, but... Hey, what do I know? But the thing with found footage stuff, it's just tougher because there's so many of them. I mean, I put a list again on Letterboxd and I got well over a hundred that I've seen. And when you do so many of them, it's like, what more can you do? Like, what more can you do with that prospect? What more can you do? Like, he saw something. <laughs> at least the guy like immediately warned them like yeah I'm going to get in trouble but he immediately warned them hey there's somebody out there there's something out there and of course smoking a bit of weed to ease the tension now that gets into the question do you go out there out of curiosity to find a discovery or do you because are you in a Harry and the Hendersons film or are you in a horror film? I mean, how many people out there search for Bigfoot and why don't you tell them, you don't die, go be crazy, you don't die. It's just that we know there's a horror film so we think these people are stupid. But then there's other people that do search out there and because uh, they know nothing bad will happen. Because they know either A, nothing will be found or B, they don't think there's going to be a horror film. <laughs> So at this point, like, how do you view yourself and how do you view a character, whether doing something stupid or not? Do we view them as stupid because we know it's a horror film? Like, if we're in a house, you're in your house, you hear a noise, you don't check it out because you want to see what it is. But if we know it's a horror film, we go, that's stupid to check that noise out. But in reality, we do it every day. So... How do you view it based on perception? There we have a big foot. <laughs> I don't know the actors' names. I'm not good with names anyway, but... I said there's Bidford County, which was awful. Willow Creek was very boring. And there's... One called Bigfoot, The Lost Coast Taste, which had potential, but I thought the ending kind of just went meh. I, I thought the ending just kind of drizzled down. It wasn't much of a payoff, in my opinion. Something moves, right? I'm trying to remember. I think that dark figure there. Think. <clears throat> now, by this point, I don't think the creature realizes what happened to his kid. Because I think they're screaming that you, you hear. And you realize that's when it finds maybe a ch its child. Been a while since I've seen this film, but and this film sadly it's on DVD in the US, but the Blu-ray, as far as I can find, is only overseas. 
Which is too bad. <laughs> just I just take it easy. Relaxing. <laughs> See, usually like in a slash of him, this be like the kind of cool guy, but you figure he'll get killed he's smoking weed, and I kind of like that he's the lead and survivor. That's another thing I like about it. I mean, I don't need him yelling like this. But I guess it was him acting stupid because he's high on weed. I mean, I could do without that, though. I, could, I would cut that out. At least he's not being a creep here and he apologizes. I'm sorry for making noise and <laughs> So he's a lot more quiet. So at least it shows he's he cares a little bit about it. So the thing about shots like this, it's a bit too dark so you can't see in some of those wider shots. Like this shot, I can't really see anything but I guess that's the point. Is that you're supposed to like look through your head and be like... Yeah. <laughs> Flipped himself off the fucking hammock. <laughs> Don't smoke in hammock, man. Don't smoke in hang. I think he gets a joke played on, man. If I remember. Got a little bit of night vision in this as well. So pretty much you have a first bit here establishing the setup, establishing a little bit of the characters the situation that's been started they hit something they don't know what it is there's something bigger out there and we don't learn more throughout as to what's going on I, I mean I don't know what found footage films are coming out I don't know if there's a site that showcases what's coming out in the future. But yeah, I'm just curious because, like I said, something about them, when they work, they really work. And when they don't, they just, they could be the worst of the worst. Oh, they paintball them. There you go. There's the stream. There's a yell stream. At Rogers Bay, you kind of figure that's when this thing found his... Uh, either had already found it and it died there or found its kid's dead body. And there's only one group around, and it would be this. Now I raced here quick, and you just hear the growling. This is pretty damn dark for a reason. I think revealed the face. Or something.
Why he doesn't have night vision on right now, I don't know. Just for movie sake, I guess. My damn, why not use night vision right now? I'm sure the others probably think it's a bear or something. And that's always a tough thing about these movies that when you make these kind of movies, why is the camera still going? Why is the camera still on? Why you put down the camera? Why you do this? Why you do that? There's always a question to ask when it gets into that conundrum of a story. That's why I think it'd be interesting to see more of just a point of view of someone like Hardcore Henry. So you don't all those questions about a camera you don't have to worry about because it's just from the person's eyes. So you don't have to worry about the camera breaking the camera, put the camera down, why are you still filming. You don't have to go through that, which there's a lot of movies that go through that same dialogue. So I think there should be a bit more of those. But I guess with the cameras utilizing it shut off to show a bit of transition of time, night vision, camera static. To, to hide certain things he can't do to his lower budget. But then that's the thing where people who are hardcore into found footage, they look at scenes like this and they try to a form of steepism, see themselves as in that room. I think this is where you see a face, which is a cool jump steer. Nice effect on the face. I think you see it here. It's not gone. There you go. I thought that was a nice, uh, pretty decent jump steer. Maybe some people, it's obvious, but I thought it was still nicely worked out. Just show the footage. Doing something out there. I'm guessing it's fucked up their vehicle. That's what this noise is. Just it's found later. Yeah, the crash. That'd be the vehicle. And they find out here that their vehicle is fucked. Yeah. yeah. Completely pissed. Right through the windshield. Yeah, maybe we'll start, but... I love that now they're going, I thought you said it was peaceful. How the fuck is he going to really know, dude? I mean, you guys know as much as him. His uncle ain't coming.
Yoked is yelling, streaming, and throwing shit going to help the situation. Like little moments like this I do like. Like she was yelling and streaming, but then boom, the guy's gonna take take the initiative, he's gonna try to do the right thing. And then the drover's like, hey, wait a minute, hug. Like little moments like that can really help with characters. Yeah, they had a fight, but then she hugs him and all this. <clears throat> like I said little moments like that can can work when added up to help ease on characters. But if you don't like them, moments like that can ease up the dislike of them. Like I said, the GoPro stuff, you have really cool shots like the, the bicycle stuff here coming up. It's kind of this impending doom, because I think if you see enough of these movies, you know this guy is fucked. It's just a matter of when. But I like the you know, utilizing the speed of this. It's really cool. And you're going to get a nice reveal of the creature. Then at one point he turns and it's right there. It's like, oh shit. That's a nice way of utilizing the oh shit factor. The jump steer factor. It doesn't feel as cheap as other movies. As Sally would do something. He put down the down for like five minutes and now he's got it back up. At least out here is being proactive and not just sitting there with a thumb up their ass. Because what else are you going to do? And that's the thing, like the other people, yeah, they're playing a little prank on their friend, but they didn't know something was in the woods and something was there. And, you know, they didn't know that was going to happen. It's not, they didn't do it on purpose. And no, the black guy does not die first. <laughs> he, the black guy does not die first. So, there you go. <laughs> very different. It's very different from paintball. Number one, don't put your finger near the trigger unless you're ready to shoot and kill. I think this is a bit where he gets a little bit of his uncle, and that's why you see the uncle a little bit at the end. Although it doesn't really result in much because the uncle gets uh, killed pretty quickly. Oh, he tries 911 first. I don't know why he didn't try his uncle first, because his uncle knows where they're at. Should have tried them him first. This is where you get the reveal of the Bigfoot, which I thought was cool. Just trying to get reception going back and forth. There you go. Quick enough to see it, but not enough to get a big old bead on it. Like this, she, this looks really cool. Like to see the speed, like right on the side there. Like that's really cool to show how fucking fast this thing is. 
Like you really feel the speed of all this. And that's an intimidating feature. And being hidden by the brush so it don't... It's hard to make a Bigfoot look good. So by hiding it here works. Ooh shit. That's a big fucking hit. Oh shit. Nice stunt there, too, because someone, I don't know how they did the, the tumble, but. I mean, if you don't like any amount of found footage, I don't know if any of them would ever work for you, but I do think this is definitely one of the better ones for me. Ooh. You don't try to pedal, but yeah, that ain't gonna help. Streaming ain't gonna do shit. No one's gonna hear you, man. I thought the director did a decent enough job having the creature far away so that you see, like, as if it was a shadow, and just the longer you look at it, the longer you can pick it apart look wise but you know, the look when you do see it isn't that bad compared to other movies and other bit and ooh there you go and not just found footage but I've seen a lot of other type of Bigfoot movies and what well, you know, with the way the shot with how I think this pretty tightly paced. I do think this is one of the better ones. Like I, I grew with Harry and the Hendersons. So I do love that one. That's my favorite Bigfoot movie. But horror wise. I'm trying to see if there's a list of Bigfoot movies. Trying to remember all the ones I've seen. It's hard to remember all of them. <laughs> There's a lot of them. I don't believe in Bigfoot. I don't believe it exists. I think there's just too many... With the way the world is, there's just too many things we should be able to find this thing already. The fact after all this time and all this desperation, there's not been 100% proof as in a dead body. Boom, right there. Um... Either it's as smart as Jidsaw to see things coming, or there's something else to it. Ooh, shit. Like that, I didn't mind that moment. Throwing that shit in. And immediately, again, the guy puts the camera down because he knows this is more important. <laughs> Using the camera to be able to zoom in. I said the idea why using the camera here is to zoom in. I said, there's been a lot of Bigfoot movies. Like, here's a Primal Rage. I remember being disappointed in. Uh, what was it? Bigfoot vs. DB Cooper is the worst Bigfoot film. Easily the worst. It's just a bunch of shirtless guys for a good chunk of time. Uh, DB Cooper is not really a thing. It looks like the budget of a porn. Um, listen, Willow Creek is pretty boring. Bigfoot County is terrible. Bigfoot with... Was a uh, cool dude in that one? I'm trying to remember. Night of the Demon from Back to the Day is... 
interesting <laughs> in uh, what it does, where at times does feel like a slasher film with how gory it is. And some goofy, I mean, he rips a guy's dick off and or swings someone and the guy gets impaled. <laughs> you, you can laugh at it, and it's pretty gory. Uh, Abominable, that's one I didn't mention. Abom Abominable is a really good one with Matt McCoy. Uh, that's kind of like Rear Window because there's a guy, Matt McCoy, in a wheelchair and he goes back there because this is where him and his his wife died. His wife died long ago. He's kind of forced to be back here by a guy taking care of him to like face his fears, to try to overcome his trauma. Across the way, there's another cabin, and Barbara Coy looks with binoculars to see what's going on, and there's Bigfoot around. Abominable, I do like. That's, I would say, Harry the Hendersons, this movie, and Abominable to me are the three best Bigfoot movies, in my opinion. That's right, save your shots, don't fire willy-nilly, you don't have infinite ammo. Again, the only issue is sometimes it's a little bit dark, so it's kind of hard to see certain scenes. Which I get it, I mean, you're in a cab in the woods at night time. It's not going to be like this, but sometimes it's just, you kind of do it like this. Okay, push, it's trying to push the door open. The darkness and a bit of the shakiness just makes it a bit hard to see what's going on, and that could be issuing a lot of found footage stuff that people get annoyed by, understandably so. So we have our guy shoot at least one shot. Either hit him or steer him off. Oh shit. <laughs> Puts the camera down to help this girl. Oh shit. Definitely shows the power of this thing. This is another smart idea. He leaves the camera. Again, the guy doesn't go back to get the camera to go in the cellar. No, we gotta go into the cellar and that's it. Uh, I don't know where he got this camera from. Maybe, <laughs> did he have an extra camera? Now I'm trying to remember, where did he get this camera from? At least there is a... I don't know why he just doesn't have the Night Vision one on all times. Like, just stick with that at all times. Night Vision one. It's a siege. It's a goddamn siege. Well, if he knows, I mean, there's one place to get in and be a good old blank shot.
be a good old clean, clear shot here then. Why didn't you reload already, man? The fuck are you doing? Should have reloaded to begin with. Now reload now. Well, I hope you reloaded, dude. You don't need to have your gun all the way out there. It can actually fire from a distance. Yeah, that lady fell and fell hard. Yeah, she ain't gonna make it. And there's the aftermath of the chaos. Like I say, with found footage, you get to a point that who knows what more you can do. I mean, there's been found footage on every creature from incident lotness to various Bigfoot to aliens like alien abduction and uh, segments of VHS. Like VHS 2 had segments of aliens, cults like the Sacrament, dinosaurs like Area 407, in space like Apollo 18. Like, what more can be done? And that's the, the tough thing about that. When people still... I mean, you say thing with, you know, how many zombie films can you make? How many of these other films can you make? But a lot of times, not all, but a lot of times people make them because they're cheaper. And if you could get away with it and release it and get a lot of money... Now, I'm not saying they're easy to do... Because there's a lot of people that do them and a lot of them are bad, but. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's one of those things where. <laughs> there's blood, so they did hit them. If it bleeds, would you kill it? Definitely shows his power, what he's able to do. And the bicycle, which is his brother's, kind of realization of what happened. This is a nice human moment. I was going this is a nice character moment. Well, that's a nice moment. I'm guessing that line was thrown in for the for the audience. I am going, this is bike. But I, like that's a nice little character moment. Her hugging him and then, you know, we got you going. Of course, for me, I would be... Well, I guess I said I would be running, but at the same time, the thing comes out in the daytime as well. We've seen that. So, you probably want to save your strength until you really do need to run.
so apparently there's a shortcut tr trail, barely a trail. <clears throat> But granted, at least you're not on the open road and less viable for the thing to find them. And this film, I mean, it gets a bad rap. I don't think it gets the rap it deserves. This only has, what is it, a 5 point seven to be? I think it's a lot better than that compared to other Bigfoot and found footage movies. 5.2? No. This is not a 5.2 movie. Come on now. 5.2 is way too fucking low. Come on. Bullshit. Filmed in Bastrop County, Texas. At six foot seven, this is the second time Brian Steele played a Bigfoot. He played. Oh, I guess he took over for Harry and Harry Henderson's TV show. Hmm. Yeah, this is now five point two. Come on now. That's the, the brother's helmet that they find. That is a tough thing when you make these kind of movies is that if humanity does a lot of stupid things but they're because we're imperfect creatures how much of that can you get away with in a movie before because as an audience member, you know this isn't real. You know that's a movie, and you're an outsider, and you can judge. And we, and I judge many times as it is. So how much can you forgive and not forgive for character making that dumb decision? But if people react in different ways, they or they don't mean to react. It comes out as imperfect as it is. That's always a question that comes to play when... You're dealing with movies like this. I damn, this is not a 5.2 movie, man. Of the movies I've seen, so many fucking bad, terrible movies. I mean, to say that, like, one says there's no originality, I don't think that's the case. Like, what Bigfoot, the reason it's doing is decently original. And it's one of those few found footage movies that not everyone dies. I mean, that's more original than usual. I'm not going to sit here and say it's ground bait breaking, but didn't think it was going to be in the first place. Well, you have to hike. You have to hide here. <clears throat> I 
that's the thing when people say dumb decisions it's always like how totally every film has people doing dumb decisions if you think about But I agree with this part being very stupid. Being very stupid. But again, it's how do you deal with it where you have our lead acting smart save the shell, stop doing it, and you have someone acting stupid because there are people that are stupid or there are people who do stupid decisions. Yes, this guy is being very, very stupid. And I think that's what leads to his death and downfall later, is acting very stupid. Because Sally, in the height of desperation and steered, there's a lot of people that do stupid shit. That's the what I'm talking about before. How do you maintain on letting that go to saying screw the movie, movie sucks, goodbye. Again, people say, well, it's not realistic. Again, being a high risk situation, there's a lot of people doing stupid shit. So again, it's one of those things that if you're enjoying the film enough, Maybe you'll forgive some stupidity like that. And give excuses. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing to, to look into. Again, it's just... If you're enjoying the film enough... Because of... like Again, I like the lead guy. I think the location they got... Works very well. I think there's some good sequences like the chase sequence on the bicycle, among others. I think it goes by a good pace. I don't think the acting's bad. Yes, there's some characters doing stupid stuff. I will agree with that. But, you know, I like the way it ends. I think there's a lot of good... I think with the over 100 found footage films I've seen, this to me is one of the better ones. Yeah, that's all we got left is you shot them all, idiot. <laughs> You'd have a lot more than that if you didn't fucking shoot them all. They should have at least had the character apologize. Unless I missed it. They should have had the guy apologize. I'm sorry, I lost my head. I'm sorry I did this. That's one of the reasons I like the tunnel is that... If the killer... I mean, killer. If the terrors are doing something stupid... Or you're wondering what their motivation is. I'll cut to them being interviewed and they kind of explain their point of view. Uh, I like that bit of business. At least to me. That was a bit interesting. Yeah, at least to me. That's just my thought on it. <sighs> But yeah, that's why you every person has their own taste. You get ten people, they'll see a film, five people like it, five people hate it. Why? Because of their own either personal experiences or their taste or different level of thinking, however you want to put it. Fucked up his legs.
Oh, there's the the Bigfoot. You don't know what it is. Steady. There you go. That also gets to another question. Should you put music in a found footage film? Because if this is footage found, who put the music after the fat? Why would they put music in after the fat? Like this music here. Why is there music here? Who, like within the world of this footage being found, who put the music in there? Why did they put the music in there? It, there's always these questions that arise because of that stuff. And like I said, either you enjoy these type of movies or you don't. Either you get into it or you don't. And with every movie for me, I just take it one step at a time. And you think, okay, you know, a good channel is going to make it out because you got, you know, four of them right here. But then, you know, three of them are going <laughs> to... That's going to change real quick. <laughs> real fucking quick. So another call with the uncle. I guess a false sense of security, false sense of hope. Like you think this guy's going to get him out of there. The help is coming. So that makes you wonder if they had stayed at the cabin and the uncle got there, then they could have all, at least these three might have, might have made it out. Instead of just the one. <clears throat> well, just shoot them from there. Like, you don't have to go that far away. Like, why do you have to go all the way over there? Just shoot them from here. Like, why do you have to go all the way there? There's no reason for that. <laughs> There's no reason to run all the way over there. Just... And there's a bit foot going to be revealed again. <laughs> oh yeah, it comes out of smoke. That's another good jump steer. There you go. Yeah, and that's... I guess they figure that there's too many trees and they couldn't get it. But there's a big old sky right there. They could have done it.
Ooh. Uh, it does it does I think showcase the the bit power bit foot in this. I think they do a nice job of showcasing that. And then this here, like shoving this fucking thing all the way down. And it really does look like they're in it as well. I think this is pretty. Like I said, moments like this, like it feels. It's weird saying slick enough for a found footage, but it feels. I don't know, it doesn't. I did. You want to see really bad ones? Go watch Blackwater Vampire and, and some of these other movies. Go watch Bigfoot County. Go watch some of these other films. <clears throat> oh, shit. <laughs> it really does look like they're... <laughs> Timber. Like, this does look like, holy shit, these characters are really falling through this, and how the hell do they do all this? Like, that, it looks painful and chaotic. I thought that was pretty effectively done. It does showcase the, the chaos and sell it fairly well. <clears throat> I think when I first saw him, like, may, is his brother maybe not Dowell because passed out from the legs? But I uh, don't think that's supposed to be the case. Of course, this lady didn't make it. <laughs> well, that's another cool shot as well. Jumping down the... <laughs> Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, yeah, I thought that was a nice, cool shot there. Trailer shot, as they call it. Do you impersonation of a tumbleweed? Don't play with my beard. Stop playing with my beard. Stop playing with my beard. You jealous you don't need a beard? I see the whole body's a beard. Your whole body's one big beard. That ain't my fault. So I guess you maybe get the idea he's faking it. See where the hell this guy's taking them. And this is where we get the reveal pretty soon of what the whole story is and what's going on. What is happening here. Sort of the glimpsing remains of the carnage. Yeah. 
in all the bodies. Oh, I think like he walks away, maybe. Yeah, and then. Oh, I think he maybe takes this camera. So it's been a while since I've seen this. But it's, we get the reveal that there's a, a little kid, you know, Bigfoot. And that's what was hit. That's why this thing's so pissed. That, li that little bit there I thought was interesting to showcase. And this leads pretty much out of it. There you go. There's a review of why it's doing it. Pretty much the bit for showing, look what you did, look what you did. Which the, the guy is the most innocent. He didn't do anything to, on this. He didn't do anything about it at all. Like I said, I thought it was a nice little twist on it all. There's a lot of movies that would give no explanation, but at least there is an explanation. I said I think the makeup and effects aren't that bad at all. It's I think it's actually pretty decent. That's where we get the uncle there to help him out. And as we set up the uncle, I mean I said for a bit of false sense of security okay just run you do there's no reason to stop how is it your fault you say it's all my fault how dude how like you were sleeping they were burning your beard nothing about is your fault nothing Like that's a cool looking Bigfoot. That's I think pretty good makeup. I've seen a lot of these movies and that's one of the better ones. He's definitely bleeding. Like that's a really good makeup on the face. And makes a decision that saves his life. I, mean, I don't know why the guy is saying it's my fault. He didn't do anything wrong. It was him sleeping. They were doing his beard. And he didn't do anything wrong. But I guess. Just naturally wanted to assume guilt I guess. And I thought this was an interesting twist where it makes automatically the Bigfoot character just that bit more interesting. <laughs> and see, as I was enjoying the film, but this ending here I thought really put it to a bit over the edge of me saying, okay, I do like and enjoy the movie. 
I said for found footage films, this is a bit different, and unique. With like, like I said, ninety percent of them is everyone dies. But I thought this is a little teeny bit of poignant poignancy. Guys, brother's dead. Uncle, I'm guessing is dead. And uh, the vehicle is there from the leave and get out. And then the movie's over. No sequel bit ending, no cheap shot, no cheap jump steer at the end. It exists. He's got the footage that exists and there you go. Like I said, I think that was a nice way to do the ending with a lot of these found footage films. Of the found footage before films, I definitely think this is the best ending to any of them. And like I said, it brings a little bit of extra touch to it. Again, feeling a bit bad, understand the Bidfoot's motivation, feeling bad for our lead, who is blaming himself, even though he is the least to be blamed for this. And, uh, like I said, least to be blamed for this. And I thought, again, they, it's a short film, too. I mean, how the end credit starts an hour and 17 minutes. Not long at all. And I just think it's well, pretty well made for what kind of film it is. Yes, there are some characters, like the, the, the one guy shooting like he isn't he shouldn't that the guy was being very stupid but that automatically doesn't make it a 5.2 out of 10 movie come on now at least in my opinion but yeah i, I did truly uh I, I do really like the the movie um with that said thanks for watching take care we'll see you guys later Bye bye